Hi everybody, I'm Roy Falk and welcome to part one of setting up a small public vanilla Minecraft server. Now in this video I would like to talk to you about how you will go about protecting your spawn area from griefing by players and mobs. Right at the start, before you build the building or maybe after you build the building, your spawn building, you will set your uh, world spawn point. Now to set your world spawn point you'd probably go to a good spot in the middle of the building and you will type in the command set world spawn set world spawn. So if you execute this command then this spot where I'm standing will be the world spawn point. I think it actually works on the particular uh, chunk that I'm in. Once you set your world spawn point, the default setting for a normal Minecraft vanilla server is a spawn protection of 16. There's a setting in your server.properties file in your Minecraft server folder and the line is spawn-protection equals 16, which means that this, from this uh, world uh, spawn point, there's a 16 block radius that will be protected unless you're an opted player you won't be able to break or place a block so that gives you a good basic um, protection but it does however not protect the area outside of of your spawn building and a very common problem of course is mob grief and creeper explosions most server admins will stop that kind of uh, griefing by using a server rule that you might or might not know or a game rule and the game rule is to switch mop griefing off so typically what you would do is you type the command game rule mop griefing false and if you execute that command then creepers and apparently also endermen can't actually damage the, the area around your spawn but it applies to the entire world so that means that you you'll still have creepers exploding but there won't be any damage to any parts of the world and that that would be a disadvantage because although you might want to protect your spawn area from creeper explosions you might take a, uh, away some of the gameplay effects if you don't have any creeper explosions anywhere on your map so i would say that that's probably a disadvantage Apart from getting griefed by creepers, your spawn area of course can get griefed by players. And remember, we only have a spawn protection um, on default of 16. So this whole area here is not protected against uh, players actually digging holes in the landscape. A very popular way to prevent people from actually removing blocks is to apply a mining fatigue. Now if you think about the area here and if I fly around this area and I look around the area I can see about uh, 10 chunks far and there's a reason I can see about 10 chunks is because in the properties in the server.properties file there is a line that says view distance that's view dash distance equals 10 which means that I can actually see 10 chunks far a chunk is about 16 blocks it is exactly 16 blocks in diameter that means I can see about 160 uh, blocks far so if I at the spawn um, I really don't want to see any griefed areas within 160 blocks uh, from the spawn now typically if I was going to build a, a clock and a, a, a command block I'm going to build it in a secret room below the spawn the, the this um, world spawn below this building i'll make a secret room and i'll put it in there but i'll just show you outside how to build this so i'm first going to show you how to build a hopper clock now a hopper clock is you use two hoppers for that and you attach them to each other now the thing about a hopper is that a hopper will place an item that's in the hopper in an adjacent um, storage to which it's connected but you can actually connect two hoppers to each other 
Um, and what will happen is the item will move from the one hopper to the other hopper and back. Now what's the use of that? We can use this to create a pulse. And for that I use something called a redstone comparator. So I put that down and if we look at that we can see that every time the item goes in here the comparator will flash. And this, that, that gives us a pulse that we can send uh, to command block. Now you can see the signal is quite weak doesn't go very far and that's why I like to use a redstone repeater so I place the redstone repeater down I just set it to the maximum delay and then I put my redstone down and now you can see we have a, a hopper uh, clock sending out a redstone pulse and this can be attached uh, to a command block that in turn will repeat a command. Before I put down the command block I just have to talk to you about something called command block output. Now if I have a command block running and a command block execute a command, if you are an opted player the command block output will actually be displayed on your screen while it's happening. Uh, now maybe what I should do is just switch that on so I can just see that I can just show you how this will affect you. So I'm going to go ahead and type game rule command block output true. Now you'll see that at some point the command block will actually be spamming my screen. Yes it's there right away because I, I actually have other command blocks on uh, the server that's executing commands and you can see how it's actually sp it's spamming my screen so what you want to do is uh, you if you don't want to see that spamming on your screen all the time and it's and, and it's going to be quite a distraction if you try to work on the server you want to set your command block you want to you want to type in forward slash game rule space command block output space false and that switches that spamming off. It still comes up on the server terminal, um, on the ser server console, it still shows there, but it does not spam your screen. It does not appear on any of the normal player's screens, it's only if you're an opted player that you can get spammed if, you, if, your, um, command block output put, if your command block output is set to true. Now let's go ahead and look at how you can use uh, mining fatigue the mining fatigue effect to prevent um, regular players on your server from breaking blocks. So I'm going to put down the command block and I'm going to enter the command that we need to apply mining fatigue to the to the immediate area. Now I'll, I'm going to apply it to 160 block radius. So the way I do this is I type the command which is effect uh, to all players that's the at B sign block brackets radius equals 160 comma and then I put the the next bit of it in which is M equals zero uh, that means a player in mode zero which is uh, survival mode close block brackets mining fatigue is number four so I put that down for three seconds and it's amp amplifier 10 which means it's mining fatigue 10 and then I go and I apply that now to best demonstrate this I should uh, switch myself to survival mode so I'll go right ahead I'll just um, before I do that I'll just grab a diamond shuffle shovel and then I'll switch to to game mode zero and I'll just have a look and I can see that I have mining fatigue and you can see how the mining fatigue gets updated so now if I want to dig around here now remember I'm an opted player so 
I shouldn't have any problem digging around the spawn area and I'm, I'm far enough away from the spawn area anyway but I can't break anything now I can break these uh, this grass here because I'm an opted player but I just simply can't break any blocks and this will apply to any player that's 160 block radius from this command block and if you keep going you'd eventually get away from the area and you'll be able to break blocks um, now I wouldn't as I said I wouldn't put this machine here in the open I will actually put it in a secret room just below the, the world spawn point. Mining fatigue works really really well to prevent players from digging holes around the place. There is one problem though you can't mining fatigue doesn't actually stop you from placing blocks so if you look um, in this area you'll see that if I'm just outside the, sur the, the spawn protection area of 16 then I can place blocks so I think one big disadvantage from using mining fatigue to protect your spawn area is that it does not prevent players from actually placing blocks and people building mud huts and all sorts of uh, mud towers and nerd poles around your spawn area can just look just as bad as, as creeper holes and things like that now you're going to be you are going to be really surprised if I tell you that I, uh, for my server, I don't actually use or recommend uh, mining fatigue to protect the spawn area, and I don't actually switch off um, mob griefing to protect the spawn area. I use other methods uh, to protect the spawn um, area, and we'll look at that next. Now let's talk about mob griefing first. Now the worst type of mob griefing of course is server explosions and, and server explosions around um, your building would look terrible so you get all of these holes. Now I haven't switched mob griefing off, how do I protect the area? Now uh, to, to do that I need to actually show you the secret room so this is the point of revealing the secret room to you. Now I'm going to take you down to the secret room and, and please don't be distracted by all the things that's happening down there uh, and, and I will, I will, we will cover those in the next few videos. We're just going to look at uh, what do we do with creepers. Now we, we don't want to kill all the creepers on the server because that's, that's going to take away from the, from the gameplay. We also don't want to switch off mob griefing. Uh, because we d we want those explosions out there blowing holes in 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 the in in the map and creating that effect, but not around the spawn. So what we really want to do is just kill all the creepers within a certain radius um, around the spawn. Now how do we do this? Now I'm going to just switch to spectator mode. Um, no, I don't actually have to. I'm just going to go down here break this glass and jump down here to the secret room and here we are this is the secret room now let's see which one do we want to look at all right so we got mining fatigue there we talked about that now let's talk about kill all creepers around spawn let's have a look at that now this is what i do so instead of switching uh, mob griefing off what i do is i kill all the creepers within 160 block radius of um, this command block which means that if the players run out of the spawn uh, building and they go out on the map and it's night time there won't actually be any creepers for longer than a second on the map so the creepers won't have a chance to um, explode now to best demonstrate this uh, to you I will set it to night and then we'll see if we can fly around and just see a glimpse of creepers out there and see if they um, do get killed so just flying around and there should be mobs spawning anytime soon now we probably won't see, do you, did you see that? 
that was a creeper that spawned there was a few creepers that spawned here and you can see how these creepers get killed off uh, by that command now previously I switched off that command and I'll just switch it back on again the command block output I'll put it to true now I should be seeing um, killed creeper killed creeper and you can see how all the creepers are constantly killed around um, spawn so there's never going to be a creeper explosion close to the base and if somebody actually um, is 160 blocks away and they lure a creeper into the area um, the moment the creeper walks gets closer to 160 uh, blocks from the from that command block the creeper will be killed so there won't be any creepers around this area so then your next question is if I I'll just switch that off uh, quickly so we don't get spammed then your next question will be well if you don't have if you don't actually use mining fatigue how do you protect this area because if you use the standard setting of um, 16 blocks then people are still going to grief the immediate area what I actually do is I set the spawn protection area to 160 now that's a huge area now that prevents that that, that gives me the advantage of players not actually not actually being able to dig holes or even remove the grass or place any blocks within 160 blocks uh, and, and that that gives me a huge spawn protection which is great it does create other disadvantages and the disadvantages is if a player spawns on the server for the first time they would be placed anywhere within this 160 block radius so they won't even be able to sometimes see this the spawn building another frustration for a lot of players is that um, with the standard minecraft way of of a player spawning um, on the server the first time is that a lot of the times players just land on the roof they don't even go into the building they don't even um, get to this to the spawn point where we want to place them because we, we really want to place somebody there so they can look at um, uh, the, the messages for the server and they make a start here and then start to look around the server and all the signboards but that doesn't happen um, on a vanilla minecraft server and it gets worse the bigger you set your um, spawn prediction area but in the next video we're going to talk about how do I go about putting a player right here when they spawn on the server for the first time and um, thank you guys for watching and um, and I hope you enjoyed it I'm not very good at doing tutorials it's a learning experience for me uh, and I hope uh, you can find some useful information from this thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye